there we go. Okay, we're are we recording? <laughs> recording. Yeah. Oh, professional. Here we go. <laughs> we're <very> professional. <laughs> oh. Mario, do you want to start? <laughs> Hot <laughs> men in Rome. Hot men in Rome. There, there, there it is. When in Rome. When in Rome. So, what do you? What shall I say? Uh, shall I talk about my upcoming? Uh, Coming, my yeah, <laughs> coming release. I, or should we should we go to? I don't know to those that have already been released or will be released. Hi, anyway. Mark. You can definitely start. I mean, maybe go into what I'm curious about. And like I said, I completely just didn't plan anything for this. <laughs> um, how was it different? Because you're now with a traditional publisher for this one. How is that process different from self-publishing? I think that's what I've been really curious about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely. So, you know, look, I, for me, um, I was really happy with the first two books that I, you know, published myself. But as you all know, um, doing it all yourself is a lot of work. <laughs> so, and, you know, and most people work full time. And uh, so doing it all on my own was, was definitely a challenge. Uh, so, you know, uh, I had full intentions of, of uh, uh, publishing, self-publishing this after about nine months of querying, you know, because it's, it's a controversial book, as, as Ash knows, because she beta read, read it, you know. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for it. And, um, you know, and this company, 5310 Publishing, was interested in it. And uh, so they're a small company. So, I mean, it's very, what I like about it, to be quite honest with you, is that they're, they're giving me so much attention. You know, I don't, no one has taken uh, the reins from me. You know, like I am, I am fully involved in, in all of the decisions, even this cover, which makes me very nervous. <laughs> I mean, uh, everyone likes it. I know. I, you know where it makes me nervous? It's like when I showed it to my mother and she was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and let me say a week from today, mom is going to be 89. So <laughs> happy birthday. Hey. Little old Italian woman likes the abs, I guess, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, so, um, you know, and it's interesting, like some of my uh, uh, male friends, straight male friends, are, they're like, can you go somewhere in between, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, does this make you uncomfortable? Right. <laughs> so, can we rip the cover off while we're reading it so no one sees? <laughs> that, <laughs> yes, and I think that, Ash, honestly, I think that's what that's all about. <laughs> I think, I mean, sex sells, though. So I, I think that a yeah. lot of people, like, it's, it's definitely very catching. And I like how, um, is that the Vatican in the background or Rome? It um, is. It is. The, it's, that's, that was my view uh, when I lived in the seminary, so. Um, yeah, so, so the, the first image was, uh, I don't know if I shared that with you, was uh, of a priest from, uh, or a young seminarian from here down and sort of looming behind the Vatican. And uh, it was a very sexy look, but... Uh, um, that much? You know, it actually, to be honest with you, it, it was more controversial, you know, even though he was fully clothed, you know, having this, this kind of thing. Um, I, you, they had a count, they really had to say, look, we've done our market research on this. People are going to click on this title. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, click away, you know? So, um, yeah, th that's the other thing. They've done a lot of market research and, uh, you know, put it out there to people. So I'm like, uh, this is the part that. I find most stressful about our indie publishing was is uh, marketing, uh, mm -hmm. putting it out there, uh, and um, you know, like we all do a really good job, I think, you know, of, of dropping our links and you know, uh, splooging all over the place. Uh, our <laughs> our our book, right. our links, <laughs> you know, but you know, I mean. 
having them do it is really great. A little help <laughs> so, never hurts. Yeah. And it's nice it, that they have that marketing, like the data too for you. Yeah, that's what they showed me. They showed me a, um, a chart of all different, and, and also another chart of where people buy their books. Uh, where would they buy this book? You know, uh, they, they did market analysis on the title too. Uh, because it was originally Loss of Innocence, and they're like, that is so tired, it is so overdone, <laughs> you know, a lot of books out there, and I'm like, you know, you know, and I, I actually discovered that about Body and Soul after it was published. I mean, you, you search on Body and Soul, there are tons of Body and Soul books. I'm like, damn, why did I choose that? <laughs> you know, I didn't do that market research, so. I even accidentally used the phrase I mean, that phrase is in London Calling and it wasn't intentional. It's yeah. a, a, a common, probably overused phrase. <laughs> you know, I mean, so they're, they're probably right. On the, on the flip side of that, I don't know how I would feel about, because my title's kind of where I start the book. Yeah. You know, if the title's where everything falls into place and I, I write around that, I mean, it wouldn't be, I, I guess... I don't know. It'd be tough for me to change a title after, after a while. So you already have your title before you start writing? Um, no. Um, yes and no. And, uh, yes and no. Oh, so, okay. that so it. her name is murder sprung up from the title, but London calling kind of at about a quarter way in became the title. And then the book took off, you know, so, and that's, the London Calling, there's a lot of books called that too. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting how different we are in the way we approach things, you know? I, I, that, it was interesting, I don't know if this was on the writing show or somewhere else where like people just, we all have our different ways of getting our product together, right? You know, like I, you know, I have a working title, but I don't, you know, the first actual, the first title of, of Body and Soul was uh, Forbidden Kiss. And I think that actually, would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Body and soul too. I think they all are. Yeah. Great. But, you know, I mean, I find, I find uh, titles to be difficult, you know, just like synopses. I don't know about you guys. Oh, I'm going to stab myself in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> that I did the breach. I did <laughs> stab myself in the eye. <laughs> the Rift Cycle, book five, stab myself in the eye. <laughs> Edge of the Breach actually came last. Like I didn't get the title until I think I was done editing because I like I don't think I knew what it like I knew what it was about, but like I, I you know I had a very I think it was going to be called Blue Dawn originally. I was like no, it's it's too gritty. For I gotta tell you, I'm I haven't touched your book Halo since uh, in about a week and a half because our you know we're selling all this other stuff, but. Um, like, I can't wait to get back to it, but I have to say, I, you know, I'm, I'm well, I'm probably 60% in, and um, there are some scenes in that that I'm just like, wow, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pressure for me. Thank you for reading, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. I mean. In like, edits, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> What Actually, did I do? <laughs> I I'm getting more used to your style of gore than like I'm like oh yeah yeah Kiter did that of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're excusing him for things you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he's grown a few feet, so he's huge. <laughs> anyway. Oh god. Um. So. so. I was traditional... wondering about that actually. You you you. We're we're talking. Never mind. We'll yes. come back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to that, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> For when, so when they launch this, do you have to, oh God, my hands disappearing. Um, do you have to do anything or do they just like put it all um, on their channels and then you kind of sit back and, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, so <laughs> all of them, all, all of the traditional publishers are, are saying that, you know, you have to participate in the marketing and all that stuff. It's, you know, it's a partnership so I was fully prepared to do that but they um, it looks like it's going to be launched either December 1st or December 15th uh, what they're doing now it's in it's fully in production now they're, they're sending it out to a bunch of people to get uh, reviews 
So, so they're doing all, a lot of that. And um, they're sending it up to about 100 people and um, that I don't know, you know. And um, so hopefully they'll get some reviews out of that. They said about 50% will write a review. Um, but th they do it all. And then um, I'm trying to find some, like Drew, I wish I had known more about um, this virtual. The blog tour? About, yeah, the virtual book tour. Uh, but that sounds really fascinating. So they're open to whatever I want to do with regard to these virtual book tours or, or readings and all that stuff. They're like, go ahead. In the meantime, we're also going to look for virtual book fairs. And You're stuff. actually right on the edge of being, I would go ahead and jump on that with Bookdemons because you're, she asked for two months lead time, but you've got a month and three quarters if it's coming out December 15th. Yeah. So, and you'd actually have time and you'd probably get a few, you'd probably get all your slots filled. Unlike mine, which is missing, you know, there's supposed to, there's roughly room for three people a day on the tour. And, you know, um, only my first day has three people on it. And if I could have, you know, maybe I should have pushed harder and like let people know it was there, but I also wanted them to do it right. to get people that didn't really, yeah. you know, I didn't want it to be a bunch of people I knew on the tour. Um, which makes but, sense. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think the book demons does a pretty good job of that. You should definitely so tell they, you. Do you have to tell your people? Do you have people now? Do I, I have your people get in touch with my people? Uh, yeah. Um, they said, I, you know, like I can do whatever I want. Honestly, they were like, you don't have to tell us every move you make. I mean, go for it. You know, which I loved. I was like checking with them and they, am I allowed to do this? And they're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, I just want to be the good little boy, you know? <laughs> Mario. I know. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> you were never the good little boy. <laughs> I know. Well, but the image I portrayed had to be. <laughs> Same. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I um, yeah, definitely... I would love for you to tell us more about that, Drew, about the about the virtual book tour. How does it work? What I is mean, that that one was just that's so easy. Um, you know, Anna gave me the email address. You can also get it off the and that's Anna Masakit. Uh you can also get that off the um Bookdemons website or Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I just emailed her and said, Hey, you know, Anna sent me. Uh, what do we do? And she said, send me whatever you have to give people to read. You know, if you have PDF, if you have Moby, if you have that, send me that. And um, if you want to do hard copies, because I guess some of the publishers do like paperbacks or hardbacks is to send to people. I don't know. That's awful expensive. But, um, you know, whatever you have, let me know. And she just, uh, she asked for like, like, here's what I need. I need the book's blurb, uh, any, any trigger warnings you might want to put on it, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, I usually don't do trigger warnings, but since they're reading both books and I don't want to get anybody in there that's going to be weirded out by beheadings, for example, you know, I mean, just, you know, you've got to put in the violence. And the, I mean, you know, but you know what I'm saying? I, I don't, I didn't want to get like, I, I didn't want to get a pacifist, um, um, homophobic reviewer you know in the book tour so I'm like you know it's got all these things in it and these are what we need to you know here's the genres and I, I wanted to tell as much as I could to those people that were going to pick it to review it because you want people you, you don't want somebody that only reads um Victorian romance reading a time travel epic it's just not really <laughs> So, so these people, so they get the book in advance and then they show up on the, uh, on the dates they select or whatever, and then you chat with them or you read for them or. And, and it's no, and it's not even anything like that. There are, they're getting the copy of the book or not, or they're getting a package. Like the one today was an interview and I did have to write out the interview. You know, they sent me questions and I answered them and sent them to them just like all the interviews we do. Uh, and they're supposed to be a promo post coming later today. And I don't know, really know what that is, but that is a, a site that 
does queer literature um, that's doing that promo post and then a review that's supposed to be coming today. So, I, and they're like, you know, what do you want? You can give, do these things or these things. And there was something on the list that I said, no, I don't really want to do those. Oh, it was guest blogs. I didn't want to guest on anyone's blog and write about writing process or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a mix of promo post interviews and reviews. Um, I guess if I hadn't, I would have had less people on there. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, it just kind of, they, they kind of took all the information and found people to be on the tour. And then what do you do when you're on there? Like do you, I, that's what I'm not. Clear that's, on. that's, it's, I'm not on there. Oh. Um, they're posting reviews, like the interview today, they posted the interview today to their website and it's on Twitter and they Instagram storied it. So I saw it pop up in three places this morning in that interview, uh, which was just a handwritten interview. What will come later today is a review, just like any review. Yeah. It'll be on there. It'll be on that, that, that lady's uh, website and her Instagram, and maybe she'll put it on Goodreads too. I don't know. Uh, but I've not had to do anything. I don't have to show up anywhere or Zoom anywhere. or uh, It's yeah. just, it, yeah, I'm just sending, I've just sent the information, and they're going to distribute it. They've distributed it to the people. And I've seen people reading the first book in Kindle Unlimited more this week. So I think that's some of my bloggers. Uh, opting so for that yourself. Hmm? so you like clone yourself basically and send like yourself out into yeah send yourself stuff. out to all kinds awesome. of stuff yeah yeah doppelgangers <laughs> sorry that was a weird <laughs> um that is awesome and then you um drew did you do this so london calling is the second book in the series did you do this for um is it a blog tour for only london calling it's for, it, it is a it's a blog tour for London Calling. So the post will be discussing London Calling, but because it's book two, they did say, hey, have you got copies of book one? Uh, and so I did send them a PDF file, my most recent PDF file of book one. So they were offered that and also told it was on Kindle Unlimited and also told that I had some codes that I could send out if they needed. And they didn't ask me for any of my codes. So it's cost me nothing but the $40 setup fee. And it's kind of like promoting two books in a way. It, it is. I mean, cause it's, awesome. because it's a series, it's kind of promoting both. And I see that Victoria Price is doing one next month sometime for her first book. So okay. she opted to go the other way, say, hey, look, let's introduce everybody to the book series. And, you know, if I want to in a couple of months, I could still do a different blog tour again for the first book yeah. or the second book again, you know, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how cool it is. I guess at the end of the week, I'll, I'll let you all know, you know, if I had a bunch of like, what is this garbage two star reviews? Or if I got like actual people who wanted to read the book. Right. That's, I'm sure you will, because I think that they, they seem like they're pairing you with people who, who want that <clears throat> genre and stuff. I hope so. I, I hope so. That's key. I mean, like when you throw your stuff out, I don't know. Have you any of you used NetGalley before? I used to review NetGalley. Okay, so so I'd love to get your feedback. I did it with Body and Soul, and I ended up getting two like one star reviews on that. And it was people the the person who like attacked me on it was saying I, I usually don't like indie authors and this you know I don't read indie author books and. The, the, you know, I'm like, and he didn't even finish She, she didn't even finish it. I, um, I, I it was yeah. just such a bad pairing. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a bad idea. Yeah, you pick your own books to read from there. So you would think that people would pick books that would interest them. <laughs> right. This person had a, a vendetta. I think they were, um, they saw like seminarian-y type things on the cover and I think they were offended by the church, the, the fact that the bishop might actually have a sexuality um, in that book. <laughs> the problem with NetGalley, though, is if you pick a book, you have to leave a review. Otherwise, like... You don't get more books, right? Yeah. Well, either that or, like, the specific publisher or author, like, won't give you more books you're put on like a list 
you know so that's oh, that's well, you need to put that person on a list mario i do i do <laughs> who do we need to shank <laughs> <laughs> And of course, that's where you I mean, went, Hello. <laughs> calmly discuss alternatives. Yes. Get Kiter after her. Or him, like, uh, uh, well, I think that's what's so interesting about your books, Mario, is, um, you know, I, I think we have a very similar upbringing in that we both, um, you know, are queer in, uh, well, uh, I used to be <laughs> Catholic, uh, you know, households. And that has been interesting to kind of navigate because I think that, you know, in general, the Catholic Church has this, um, you know, uh, they used to be at least very homophobic. But recently, I've even noticed some of my uh, more traditional family members have been much more open. So I think what you're doing and kind of showing how, hey, you can be religious and want to have sex too, uh, is very important, you know. Yeah, and, and, you know, things are changing, you know, even the fact that uh, politically the Pope came out with a, a statement on, uh, I don't know if you've seen that, this very week uh, on a documentary that, you know, uh, this, and this is more important for other countries more so than the United States, but uh, espousing and, and civil unions, you know, and in places in like many countries in Africa or uh, Asia and uh, other parts of the world where there are death penalties, you know, th this is huge. Also, in not just in, there, in, in Poland, for instance, the Catholic bishops are, are um, really, really uh, vehemently homophobic and anti-gay. And so these kinds of, this kind of statement from him is, is huge. So, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't uh, rely on anybody like that or any church or any institution to give me my internal value. You know, long ago we discovered um, if you grow up in a religious environment that you need to do this on your own. You know, that, that you have to come up with your, your sense of self and your worthiness to be loved and to love whoever you uh, love. You have to come up with that on your own because no one else is going to or should give you permission. No one's going to give you permission or should give you permission, you know. And so that's really what a lot of my, that, those are the messages in my books, you know. And there are a lot of good, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, so, you know, so, anywho. I think that, you know, there are a lot of, uh, like what, what my parents always said is like, you can use it as a, as a guideline. And I mean, we're, we're not like very, um, we're not very religious, but like kind of our family is. And I like that, like, you know, focus on the, the fact of love and forgiveness and stuff like that. And you can distill it into these things that can apply across all, you know, sexualities and stuff. So I think that's what really comes through in your work for me is it's like the reason these um, people are religious are for those kind of core values, but without the, uh, the kind of hatred associated with them. Right. And, and my belief is that any hatred that comes in any institutional uh, religion is, uh, is human made, you know. Oh, yeah. We use it, uh, hatred. Are we related? Because this is like exactly what, <laughs> sorry, <I> just. <laughs> well, we I'm kind of feeling like we're in church. We, we, both, <laughs> we, we both grew up in the same state in a very, very ethnic family, so. <laughs> We're from, and we're both from a similar part of Italy, so probably. Absolutely, absolutely. Sorry, go on. I was just like, it sounds exactly like what I've heard. That's the thing. Like, I think, but, but you know, like, Ash, you beta read my book. I mean, there's, there's religion in it, but that's not the point of the book, no. right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, we all sort of... Really good. Thank you. I can't wait. I'm excited because it's like um, when I was reading uh, Body and Soul and Coming About, um, I had been to certain places you mentioned in the books, and it was very much like you have a great way of, um, you pick out certain pieces of a place that really embody that place. Like you don't go off, some people like just, they give way too many details, but you just have a way of being like, here are three things about whatever, uh, you know, um, <laughs> the Northeast that, you know, if you've been there, you know. So I'm really excited because I've been to uh, Rome and the Vatican to kind of uh, live vicariously through your story and kind of virtually travel. You know, so that would be exciting. That's cool. Well, I, the one thing, one piece of feedback I got 
from an early on after first draft was more descriptions of Rome. I want to be in Italy. And so I, I did put a lot of more descriptions in there. For what Ash read got, had descriptions of, of Italy in there more. Um, but. Well, I feel like it was overly descriptive. So I think it was, it was good. Cool, cool. Well, so that's December, but there's some imminent stuff that's happening um, for others in this particular quartet. Hey, London Calling, book London two. Calling. Yeah. Woo! Mm, book two. Can I just say, because I've read it, everyone be jealous. Um, and I love no your name is. is an, no, they right. all are. And, <laughs> <laughs> I loved her name is Murder. Um, and you know, it was it's amazing. And London Calling sequels are um i think i put this in your review mm -hmm. they're notoriously difficult like sophomore novels are just like you know there's a huge stigma against them uh well not stigma but just like it's it's hard to you know the first one's such a such a uh, i don't know an explosion mm. of passion that's not <laughs> as it were <laughs> <laughs> well the abs were there for you managed to really um completely just write the second book with making it just seem like you and it was it was a continuation of the first but it just built on it like I, can you go into I guess how did you do so well at like, <laughs> that the second book without you know um, can I say that I was very worried about that really because I because I I felt like her name is murder had this big kind of like dreamy kind of vintage kind of like old movie sort of weirdness you know like it had this like and some people have said fairy tale and some people have said old movie and but it's kind of just got this vibe you know and I was really worried that the vibe was going to fall off you know that it wouldn't but the reviews seemed to indicate you know because you know Victoria said ever present fairy tale vibe and i'm like okay it's still there whatever it was is still there um but yeah you know because I, I had to i had to take all those characters that were real people in the past and make them characters that were compatible with my book and my story they're not all exactly like they would have really been um and i also was worried about like writing them in such a faraway mindset. So I kind of kept what they were thinking kind of modernish in a way, you know, but still with the ideals of that time back then. But I, I didn't want anybody to be reading Thou Forsaketh Me, my, you know, so whatever. Thank so I, I kept it, I kept it, you know, as if you had like, and this is going to be kind of lame considering some of the references in the book, but like if you had the TARDIS's translation matrix from Doctor Who when you went back in time and you got, you know, the ideas you were getting were still, I wanted it to still be understandable for a reader today uh, while still giving a little bit of a feeling that you had gone to the past. Um, I don't know. Y'all shut me up. I'm rambling now. I, Ask another I question. I love that. I, I love that. <laughs> when an author sets a book in a, in a time period, then you have to kind of imagine that. And so how was that for you, um, like writing about London in the past? How was, um, was it fun? Did you have to do some research? What? Oh, what? oh, tons of research. Uh, and I could not have done this book as a NaNoWriMo, uh, 30 days, 50,000 words, whatever. Uh, Cause I had to deep dive into uh, the people that were executed with Anne Boleyn and uh, who am I going to save? Who am I going to let fall? Who am I going, how am I going to explain how people didn't actually die there uh, outside of just immortality? Uh, but like, how am I going to make it all work and make sense with the politics at the time? And uh, so then, you know, uh, luckily I stumbled onto a couple of characters that, don't get written about that much or when they do they're largely fictionalized so i kind of took those people and made them more my main players um so uh, lots of research um 
Uh, a lot of it I already knew, um, kind of an Anne Boleyn fanatic. So I went with something that I've read a bunch on already. Um, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, there was a ton of research you could tell that went into it. And that was awesome for me. I mean, both books, um, like I said, you could literally write uh, like a paper on it because there are just so many references. I think you definitely, you know, I think what I've noticed as I've uh, written multiple, started writing multiple books is that I think you get used to um, certain traits. Like I think you you just have the fairy tale vibe. And I think you're so used to it that you're like worried that you won't have it in the second book. It was like, oh no, no, that's just how you write. Um, okay, good. <laughs> you know, so because like it totally translated, I think it, it felt more Doctor Who in the second one, which was awesome, but it built on top of that, um, the fairy tale vibe that was already there. Oh, good. Because I, I was worried. Yes, please talk uh, well, <laughs> instead of me. <laughs> It just felt so much more like you, and you just felt more confident in what you were doing. Good. That's. Did you find that Halo? It, it was way more Drew. I think you weren't afraid to um, go. Play, not that, like I said, her name is Murder is amazing. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think London Calling is just even better, you know, and you built on things that are so much you. And I could see you being like, I want to, I, I think you put a bit more, I don't know, a bit more magic in it, a bit more stuff. And like, you just could, um, you just took more risks that really paid off, I think, you know, and you were just like, I think, you know, the second book is the fuck it, I'm doing whatever I want. <laughs> so, and it really worked for you. So, you yeah. know. Yeah, and ultimately, I think that's the thing. I, I think writing your second book really does allow you to do that. You know, it's like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I, I'm going to use my voice more, you know? Yeah. So um, I certainly did that. Like, I go back and I read my first book. And I'm like, yeah, I would have done so. You know, like, there are things I would have done differently, um, mm -hmm. you know? But it must, how, how did it feel writing the second book? You know, the, what you said just kind of struck a nerve with me because by the second book, I had already kind of looked around and said, okay, all this writing advice I've been reading, I can trash it now. Yeah. Like, like I don't, like, adverbs, come on, I'm using them. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, obviously, you don't want to overuse anything. You don't want to, you don't want to have them read a page of L-Y ending words. But, like, at the same time, it's like, and and then you know Anya helped a whole bunch with fixing my comma issues. I I, I I hate commas. I learned I learned in the first after the first book I kind of learned relearned rules that I'd forgotten and had to go back and fix a bunch of stuff in the first book. There has been a mild re-edit to her name is murder where, uh, you know she said has a comma, you know where where is a comma with a said and a period with an action tag and things like that that I was like oh well, when I wrote the first book I you know sometimes I got it right but that was just luck <laughs> and um, uh, learning how to self-edit but then again I write small and grow after the after the first draft so yeah, you're a grower right I'm a, I'm a grower and, and sometimes I'm more of a teller than a shower <laughs> but um you know the I just, oh, you know, you too. <laughs> but I also took the feedback from reviews of her name is murder to heart where people were saying, well, I found it a lot of, a bit too fast and disorienting in the beginning of the book to like really snag on and figure out where I'm holding on for this crazy ride. And I, I slowed myself down um, a fairly good bit. And that might be where the improvement for the second book comes in is that I took a little more time to explore thoughts and feelings and, and set up the scene um, without, without like becoming like a slow burn either. You know, I, I, I don't think the pace is slowed to a point. I, I found a balance, you know, Works between like that, that, that breaking your neck with the bit and and I kind of wanted to like I kind of wanted to confuse and disorient at the beginning of her name is murder because there's kind of a bit of a mystery going on there you don't want to give everybody everything at first but I probably overdid it 
you know, being a first like book and having, and having no idea what I was doing. I, I, and I do too. And I, I think that it is what it is and it will stay as it is, but I can also see where there's enough people saying that, um, you know, things snapped around and jumped around too much at the beginning of the book for me to latch on. And I'm like, you got to think about the reader a little bit too. So, uh, slow, <laughs> slow, slow in my role. And, and that's, and speaking of thinking about the reader, that's kind of why I, I've, I've kind of paused on book three to kind of see, to see what the broader reaction is to the series. And if it's going to be like, am I going to write on this until I'm 70 or am I going to like ease into an ending on this next book? And it's kind of a decide of, cause I know what, so I know a lot of the things that are happening cause I set them up in the second book, but I don't know. I don't know if that's running towards an end. if not just for this bracket of stories or what so it's time will tell i think uh but i'm super excited about this book and i'm super excited about the audiobook because i've already heard it and it's fantastic and i can't wait for that to release i mean it's just um can you, you talk know, actually a bit more about that process too with jamie and yeah yeah because you that is an amazing story it is an amazing story and it's kind of like weird how it happened because you know, at the end of, at the end of Indie April there, I got into a conversation on Twitter with uh, Victoria, the signer 20, 20 something that's just had her story out, uh, the Proxima G. And she's like, you need an audiobook," And I'm like, yeah, well, great. I mean, somebody give me the money and I'll have an audio book. Um, but I had avoided the ACX because I really didn't want to get over there and have to like turn down all the auditions because I didn't think anybody could be murder for me. And I, I listed it as up for audition. And the very first audition I got was Jamie's and she freaking blew my mind. She was your um, first. She was the first audition. You never get your first. And I, <laughs> well, she's going to like that. Um, <laughs> But she was the first audition and I got one other, but by the time I got the other one, I'd already decided, you know, that this was what's happening. So you agree to do the audio book and then there's um, royalty share. Some of them do royalty share. They get, uh, we as a unit get 40% of every sale and we split that. So we're getting 20% of each book that's sold, uh, which at this point mostly the books that have sold are the ones we've given codes for, um, which is okay. It's something that's got to grow. Um, but usually you have to have a book out, but since I put London calling out for pre-order, you could do one while you're on pre-order. And once I learned you could do one while you're on pre-order. And once I had it finished enough to say, Hey, you can start this. I emailed her said, I'm about to put it up on there for you to just, and I didn't put it up for audition. I just listed it and sent her a link and she went and accepted it and audiobook stuff started happening. And then we got to winter and she just made my head explode uh, because winners from Glasgow. And I was like, I have done this girl a disservice putting her in here to read this book. This woman's going to kill me. Uh, you know, uh, but no, she, she rolled with it and winter's just freaking phenomenal. Um, it, more so than I ever thought possible. Um, so anyway, that's finished. She did all the, all the voices, all the reading, all the editing's done. It's separated into chapters. It's sitting with the um, audiobook creation exchange site, waiting for, waiting for Audible to say, hey, we've listened to it and compressed it and going to put it on the site. So um, hopefully it comes out soon. That is that's amazing. The, that's the <laughs> hardest part, I think, is that after it's done, for me on my end, I'm sure there's lots of other challenges for Jamie. Um, I would love to like get her for an interview at some point, but she doesn't really do photos and and she kind of hides on the internet. I'm trying to get her out of her shell a little bit. Oh, um, I'd love an interview with her. Yeah, no. I don't I don't want her to like <laughs> become Twitter addicts like the rest of us. I wonder to like have time to do the books. <laughs> what do you mean? 
I think it's so cool how she gets so much, so many subtleties between the characters. Like, you know, mm -hmm. when she's talking, you know who it is. And she just gets so many, I don't know, shades between men and women. And it's just, it's, to me, she's really such a professional. I was just like, like, I wouldn't have even thought to, to do what she did with it, if that makes sense. And right. murder's accents, too, how she switches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, well, and that's part of why I gave the, the sample I did for the audition is I was like, you know, I've got this character in this mm -hmm. first chapter. She speaks in a British accent and an American accent. And, um, mm -hmm. the, she has to sound good doing both. And <laughs> she just did, yeah. you know, it was, it was great. And then to throw yeah. Levi on top of that, to do a, a, a male voice right beside that, it's just, <laughs> She, yeah. she goes between them so quickly. Oh, I was just she like, does. Oh. And she's a whole cast of characters. And, <laughs> uh, and even more so in, in, in London Calling, because you know that there's like, there's like whole scenes. It's just three or four, uh, 500 year old, 500 years ago, Brit, uh, British women talking to each other. And she's got a voice for each of them. And it's just, it's, and, and even on the smaller characters, when she breaks off a scene, like she may kind of have a voice that kind of sounds like something else she's used, but she still, you, she gets three characters in a room and she differentiates them and you're not worried about wondering who's speaking. Um, well, and, it's you know, really good. For all of us who have done readings, and we all of us have of our own books. I mean, we, we know how hard it is to distinguish from one voice to another. Like, I'm like, this voice sounds just like the last voice, you know. So, <laughs> so I feel like you like go uh, like not not you like me like I'll go too far and then it'll be like conical, you know, <laughs> not subtle. Kyder's twirling his mustache on the side. Of the <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is very very exciting for you drew i mean it's it's uh the e this is your birthday eve and on your birthday your second book gets released that's a huge release congratulations <laughs> a huge release. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a huge relief midnight's oh, gonna strike awesome. and i'm gonna turn back into a pumpkin y'all <laughs> <laughs> That is amazing. Super congrats, Drew. I'm so excited. I will put my review up ASAP. So. Yes. Oh, Thank it's actually, that. it's, that it's before, I'm, oh, I'm, I live in the future from you, right? Yeah, no, I do, yes. so. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Ash is way in the past. <laughs> um, Ash, do you want to talk about um, your upcoming book? Can, can you? Uh, I know I, I kind of put you on the... The weird thing about it, though, is it's the first book I ever wrote. <laughs> That's so cool. That's great. Very it's cool. awesome, by the way. It's amazing. They're like, happy. Uh, that was my only complaint. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just can't help myself. I was like, they're still happy, Ash. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> There's so much joy in this book. <laughs> I don't know how to handle it. <laughs> I have such a hard time writing conflict in any of it. I'm like, does there really have to be conflict? I guess. It came across though so well. Like, and this is coming from someone who usually reads like really dark and disturbing stuff. Um, I think it is just so so feel good on a lot of levels. I think that's what a lot of people need right now, you know? And like, yes, there's conflict, but like, it's just, it's nice to see people who just like, I don't know, look out for each other and don't literally stab themselves in the, you know, each other in the back. Well, I like enough <laughs> conflict for the age group. Like the freshman in college type, never done anything, never been anywhere, you know? Like, I don't know. Like new adult, right? Yeah. For me, it kind of put me back there, which was nice. You yeah. Know, it, yeah. It, it was that memory of an, and you didn't over describe the little campus. So I just saw UAB where I spent a couple of years. And, yeah. Um, you know, it was kind of cool like that, you know, walking in, it gave me an opportunity to walk back through some of my own old memories and, um, and, and all your little your little math and astronomy jokes, which are so cute. Yeah, those are adorable. I love those. 
you know, the, the thing is with that is that we need all, all of this. Like, we, you know, depending on our moods, you know, I, I definitely need books that bring me to a different place, you know. I don't necessarily want everything to be like this life-threatening, uh, you know, conflict that's going to take me hours to kind of work through. Sometimes I want something that's, you know... I, working with high school girls right now, you know, for, for the last <laughs> two decades, um, yeah. you know, like the, those concerns are, whatever concerns they have are huge to them. And I think that's, I mean, I think it's really good for those of us who are older to remember that ordinary conflicts and ordinary life um, situations can be interesting and intriguing and all consuming at the same time. And, you know, uh, I think it takes a gifted writer to, to kind of take the ordinary and make it uh, interesting uh, and relatable. So I can't wait to read this one. You'll love oh. it, Maria. Well, there is no sex in it. So <laughs> that's kind of a disappointment. Drew and I kept on trying. <laughs> what? Drew and I kept on trying to <laughs> infuse this scene. But yeah, no, I think it works perfectly though. And it's very much that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried to corrupt everything. Um, <laughs> I orgy somewhere in there. <laughs> Just, it's, you can write it as an epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years later. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> I you think gotta wait for them to all be legal age first. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You know, I I just I I look at at, at my my little ones in school, and I'm like, they, you know, there's still a lot of like excitement even without the the sex. You know, there's oh. still a lot of like this what will be and the uncertainty of, of being with another person and. and like having a crush on somebody and, you know, the, the conflict with your best friend, which, you know, all that stuff's very dramatic. It so. is. <laughs> it's like your entire world. Yeah. What, what, do you have a working title? Uh, it's called The Gravity of Shooting Stars. Oh. It was the first book I ever wrote and I'm basically the main character, although like the incident that is portrayed was just made up for dramatic effect for her character. But like, it's very much me and my thought process and like my everything, yeah, sadly. <laughs> I can relate to that. I write like that. <laughs> You pick out such interesting details too. Like um, I love when just I don't know talking about the the dining halls and the um, even like like the t-shirts that she wears and all of that. Like you really, um, I think you and Mario Andrew, like everyone just you pick out those few details that's going to just immediately set you on a college campus. And you you also put uh, the person in their, uh, the character's mindset, like what's important to them and what are they noticing, you know? So I thought it was really interesting to kind of go back there into the, you know, the cheap beer and the, you know, horrible dining hall food and stuff. <laughs> yes. All I can remember <laughs> dining halls in college, my first time away from mama, the Italian mama was that the pasta in in when they were serving was flat, and I'm like, there, there's not even a like a it's not a tube anymore. It's so overcooked. It's flat. Like, what is that? What is this shit? <laughs> what is it? These shit, as my father would say. <laughs> I was happy to have like dry cereal whenever I wanted, <laughs> and not have meatloaf once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know when you're gonna have like a release date? Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping for November just because I wanted it to be October and then I just didn't want to I'm not one of those people that can be finished with a book and like hold on to it for nine months mm -hmm. you know I, I just have to get rid of it and so I'm like if I don't get it out 
own, I'm like, <laughs> it's not, I'm throwing it away, you know? And so I, I'm still waiting on like one or two more people for feedback. And I, I've just been lazy and haven't wanted to edit. So I still have to edit it again. And I don't know, I might just edit it myself and then release it. Awesome. I mean, I've, I've read it when I wrote it, I read it so many times and that was a couple years ago. And I just feel like I know it so well that I can't even read it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah. So I'm just kind of done with it and ready to just be like, I want to move on and write something more interesting to me now. It's kind of like a pregnancy, you know, like it's ready. I have to be yeah. birthed. It needs to come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gestated. Yeah. Take it over for me now. I'm like, here's all the edits that I've been given that I haven't even wanted to look at. Yeah. And just somebody fix it and like send me the file and I'll just upload it and be done. Yeah, but I'm pretty. super excited about the cover and I'm a little worried because it's not the same genre, obviously, because I've written gay romance and now it, this is like new adult, male, female, very clean, but we'll see. You know, uh, I, I, think, I think this is exciting. I mean, the fact that you're doing a totally different genre and, um, you know, I, I, I like that. I, you know, I, the one thing that I heard on the interview uh, on the writing show this week uh, from the author was that you need to stick with your genre so you have a brand. And that makes perfect sense from a marketing perspective. But from a writer perspective, I'm not just one genre. Like I have, you know, like I have a lot of stories in my head and I'm not one dimensional. So, um, you know, I, I think it's kind of cool that you're, you're doing whatever you want to do. Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, this is the first book I ever wrote. And I had never even, like, read gay romance before when I wrote this. And so that wasn't even, like, anywhere in my head at the time. But I, I will go back to the other stuff that I like to write. And I have a couple of... I have, like, halfway... I'm halfway through another gay romance story. And so like, I definitely think I lead more in that direction, but yeah, I don't know. I, and like, I don't even know how to market this. Like, this is just so not my wheelhouse and I don't have any friends that read this and I, you know what I mean? So we'll see what happens. Well, I, I know a lot of, a lot of people that might be interested in that given my, my, uh, how I spend my daily life. <laughs> <laughs> Required reading for Dr. Delilio's exactly. class. Um, there is talk of music. <laughs> Good. You know, but you know, a lot of your stuff is really relational. You know, I mean, that's yeah. what I liked about Stay so much. It was how do they navigate their relationships and the uncertainty and you know the vulnerability and the insecurity uh, along with everything else i mean i think that's that's a highlight of adolescence and early adulthood um, and then i don't think it ever really leaves us <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I think did, what's is even... the cover done i'm sorry go ahead. is the cover done the cover's done. Dean yeah. Cold, of course. I love him so much. Cool. Um, so it's done. Drew's actually seen it. It's more, it's like more it's kind of really, fair. It's a really cool drawing. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Nice. It's yeah, not easy to. Oh, because yeah. he, put, he put like a quote of a review from Halo. Uh -huh. Made-up review. Ace Mark. <laughs> I can't. You can use my name. You can use me for anything. <laughs> it's like... Use me. <laughs> any fun or something like that. <laughs> hey, Scott. Uh, good. 
Good stuff. But, uh, yeah, the words are definitely too small to be halos. <laughs> I have a wrecked vo vocab. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think you know what matters, I think, to me more than genre is a uh, voice. I, I read somewhere um, where someone said, I pick up a, vo a book uh, based on voice. And I think that's so true because I, um, you know, I have certain genres that I tend to read like sci-fi and fantasy. But if I can't uh, get into that, um, however the person is just articulating it, their voice, whatever that is, their style, um, and that looks really weird, sorry. <laughs> but I think for me, <laughs> that's what matters more. And your voice, <laughs> so I'm just making weird gestures over here. Um, your voice is consistent between the two and that you could definitely tell it's an Ash Knight book, you know? <laughs> sorry, I'm just kidding, Mario. <laughs> but, you know, voice over genre, I think, because it is, it is a romance, too. It is N.A., but, you know, it's... Um, it is, I would say, uh, at least from my, uh, you know, very ignorant romantic knowledge that it would fall into a similar genre. It might not be the same subgenre, but, you know, so I think that people, my, my whole point is that I know people will love it as my hand keeps on disappearing. Thank you. <laughs> it's time to, it might be time to turn the tables on Halo. I, I was thinking the same thing. It's time to go. <laughs> 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 tell us tell us halo okay i want to i, I want to know one thing first is it is is because your second book is out and mine is not and i'm curious and worried is <laughs> is it moving as fast as the first book like are people picking, are people horrible. seem to be picking oh. it up <laughs> hold on we have another guest oh really Evan! Evan App! Hi! What are you guys doing? We're talking about you! No, you're not. <laughs> we are recording, so we please be as inappropriate as uh, you want to. <laughs> oh, you're recording? Yeah, no, no, should, be inappropriate though. <laughs> I should totally. Oh, good, my picture's not showing up because I just rolled out of bed. And you have <laughs> I just showered, so we're all. <laughs> Yeah, Halo was just beginning to tell us about her. Her really. No, it's cool. Interrupt me. <laughs> no, no, please go on. <laughs> do, um, do, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I want to hear it all. Everything. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. I think it's been a very difficult year, uh, part of the year for sales, um, because I've noticed that, and I think I've, I've noticed a big shift within the writing community. Like I feel like in the beginning of the year, people were. Um, there were a lot more, I don't know, it's gonna sound bad, but like real writer's lists. And I felt lately like I've seen a lot of bots uh, cropping up and a lot of people of like only however many followers to however many followers and whatever. And, you know, for an indie author, it's hard to, you know, feel kind of like you're taking advantage, uh, taking advantage by that and um, wasting your time on it. So I have noticed marketing slowing down. I haven't been pushing it as um, much because I've been editing books three and four. But um, I think what I like about the second one uh, is that because it's the second in the series, if someone didn't like the first book, they're probably not going to go and pick up the second book unless they're a twat. But, um, you know, right. so <laughs> you tend to... Unless they invented or... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. What was that? <laughs> Someone who didn't like the first book isn't going to pick up the second book unless they're a twat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know, like generally. Lord. Um. So I think that you will get more people who like actually. Um, when I say want to read your book, you know, I put Edge of the Breach for free uh, a lot of times earlier trying to, you know, just 
you know, get it out in the world. And I think a lot of people would just download it, for instance, because it was free and not because it was their style. And I would get feedback just like, uh, you know, like, I think Halo is doing this for the shock value. I'm like, fucking obviously. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's grimdark, yes. Um, and it just seemed like I was getting a lot of people um, outside of the range. So I should, I do say that, um, <laughs> Uh, for the second book, it has been easier to get people who actually want to, I think, read it and who are interested in the series. And that's been wonderful. And the people who have left reviews and who are reading it now, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. I just literally melt every time I see one. So that's just been really wonderful. All right, that's enough about me. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, it's not. There's never enough. I, I gotta <laughs> no, say, I, I mean, I am, am so, to, this is so out of my genre, like so totally out of it. And I don't know what you've done, what spell you've cast over me. Uh, because <laughs> well, that's my books. <laughs> and I, I really, yes, spell came from Drew. Um, but uh, especially in the second book, um, you know, it, it still has all the drama and all the action and all the violence, uh, but there's this, like you, you hinted at it in the first book and, and you're getting into the psyche of your characters. Like, you, you know, because uh, the first book was all, it was, it was the plot was so huge and it, it is in this, but we know the characters more. And the fact that you're going deeper into the psyche and the psychological profile of each of them is blowing me away and has drawn me in way more even than the first one. Um, that, that scene, that scene where Kiter's basically snapped and is showing us everything that's going on in his head was just like, wait, what? Wait, what? And I'm, I'm reading this and I'm like, Okay, yeah, I relate to that. Oh, I relate to that. Oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I'm relating way too much to this guy. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, that's that's real. And it's it might have even shown me that there's more that I have ignored about what goes on in my brain that might actually be... Um, normal <laughs> well that, that might be that might be well not even just normal but might even be a little bit extra uh i don't know how you want to put that uh th there might be some more shades of mental illness in there than i thought <laughs> or but, the mental illness <laughs> is just a natural state and we just are on a spectrum uh, right sure just but, don't act on any of it <laughs> yeah d d yeah it, i think it would be safer if we didn't act out what kyder did yeah yeah <laughs> i think that's a good uh, yeah painted love yeah no the other way <laughs> Thanks. wait i learned the i will i learned the real word for that and now i can't remember what it is is it per perineum or something like that? Perineum, yes. That's it. <laughs> not nearly as fun. It's it's not, but it's like you know code. <laughs> so I've spe heard. speaking of that, Kyder. <laughs> 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 I don't know how you managed to get that death scene to be sexy, uh, <laughs> Halo, but I was just like, oh, don't stop now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that's just a normal Tuesday for me. <laughs> <laughs> And now I hear, don't stop me now. <laughs> don't stop mm -hmm. me now. <laughs> Having such a good time. <laughs> Having a ball. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my um, <laughs> <laughs> We've devolved. <laughs> Wait, no, this about. is normal. <laughs> <laughs> this is us on track. Yeah. <laughs> We've, come home. We've come home, yes. <laughs> So tell us um, more about like your character development. I mean, uh, 
lot is happening. Um, I think so. Is the wishing gone now? Yeah. It's better. Yeah, that yeah. was my computer. Okay, good. Just making sure. Um, <laughs> that was my computer dying. Um, I felt like in uh, Edge of the Breach there were certain things both of the characters had gone through that I didn't feel like I paid enough attention to. Like, I, um, I hate how in movies there might be like, oh, her entire family was slaughtered, and hypothetically, spoilers. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, you know, and then she just, uh, you know, it's like, whatever, pick back up and go on. And uh, I think part of what I wanted to explore is the lasting consequences of that and the lasting consequences of mental illness in Kyler because a lot of the first book he's coping and he's um, doing well um, I mean he's functioning and I just thought I'm like you know we all have times where we we can't function anymore and old coping mechanisms aren't working and I want to do that in a way that um, I try not to make it boring because I think a lot of the time you know you can once you start taking down the strengths of a character and their confidence and stuff. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to be annoying when Brune is kind of grieving. I tried to intersperse the action to kind of uh, lighten it up. But yeah, I felt like there were a few things I needed to answer for from the first book and kind of draw them out a bit more in the second one and focus, like the second one probably is the one that focuses, the other, one fo the other ones focus on character too, but that really kind of lays the groundwork of who they are it's very much an internal kind of battle in the second one yeah i mean like i, I found that the the first one i mean they're young you, you're you're we're growing up with them is what i'm finding. growing <laughs> as it were <laughs> as it were <laughs> i mean just growing you know just <laughs> <laughs> we're all growers he just doesn't stop growing <laughs> <laughs> oh I just need a moment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, you know, uh, back to Kiter and Rune, they're kids in the first book, you know, and, and they're just on the cusp of adulthood. And then so much more happens, you know. <laughs> so, you know, like, I'm just curious now, like, I mean, I'm, probably three quarters of the way through of the second and there are books three and four like there's so much more to the story right you'll find out when you finish the second one yeah you'll understanding oh Ooh. okay that means that this afternoon i have to put away my my essays that, the, that i have to correct and say sorry kids i need to read <laughs> Oh, there's no pressure. There's never any pressure from me. I think book two is very much about character. It's very, I, I would say it's the most vulnerable story. It was definitely the hardest for me to write in that way because it goes to certain places that are just very, very dark. Um, and I think there's the least amount of humor probably in it. Um, book three. It was a Sorry? It was a gory romance. <laughs> it was a gory romance. See, I do write romance. <laughs> Can't let sentiment cloud your judgment. <laughs> <laughs> um, book three. I love I that think, guy, by the way. Oh, Dex? <laughs> he's actually based off of, well, not the sexual parts, obviously, but he's based off my dad. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this, <laughs> so no, 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 not the. <laughs> Um, but well, like my dad will mix words up a lot and uh, not use the right one, and that is sometimes disastrous. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think the the third book is the most. Um, it has the most like world building in it. You learn a lot more about the stage, the grander stage, and stuff because um, without giving too much away. Um, and the fourth book uh it's probably i don't know i think it's the most fun but that is coming from me <laughs> yes, does that mean there's more death and destruction <laughs> <laughs> i i think well you know i i the third one i don't know it's hard to for me to say whether i think the second one is the most vulnerable i think the third is, is the most is the darkest 
Um, so the fourth one, I just remember I finished the third one. I was like, I need, I need a little bit more levity. Um, and I don't think there's more levity, but there's more uh, levity for me. Uh, sorry, it's so hard to say without giving spoilers. But yeah, so it, it, I think the fourth one is a bit more like uh, the first one in certain ways. But yeah, so it, you know. I don't know. It's always hard when you write a series because I think every time that you go to the next book, you're like, does this one suck? Do I suck? Should I just go burn in a fiery pit? <laughs> I know how you feel. <laughs> Should I jump into a volcano? <laughs> but don't, don't you just put Ewoks in? I mean, doesn't that fix everything? <laughs> Borgs. <laughs> you would <laughs> think. <laughs> that, <right? laughs> Oh, that would be an interesting twist. <laughs> Spontaneously <laughs> combusting Ewoks. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, they're electric walks. <laughs> they're equipped, not Ewoks. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's really we we um. Where's what? What's our next big event gonna be, Queer Indy? Uh, yeah, I I have reached out to a few places. Um, I don't know. I think at this point, kind of everyone's it's, things are so up in the air. Like I've seen a lot of like, if we're in person, we're gonna do this, and these are our kind of guidelines. But if we're not, we're gonna do this. So I think people are kind of uh, holding out to the end of the year to see what's going on. I I, I don't know. I mean. We should just host our own con. <laughs> you know, there's there's something good about that. We might want to do something like that in the spring or something like that. That's fun. Like, right? We could yeah. be the hosts and have like uh, get signups from indie authors on well, uh, Twitter. <laughs> from QI. Yes. Like our own people. Oh, I meant to tell you, Halo, somebody is turning in a um form this weekend i think oh awesome i will update the website but yeah if we did something like that that would be cool that'd be fun yeah we're really talking about doing our own con i was literally saying it as a joke but if you guys are <laughs> yeah, no, we could do a <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's beer um I don't know, even if it's, it was a smaller, obviously it'd be smaller scale, but wouldn't that be fun? I think we could generate a lot of excitement and, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we could make our own rules. You know? Is there any indie con? Because that might be um, an interesting kind of uh, like angle. Yeah. I mean, maybe we could partner with, with um, the writing show and have it like streaming at the, yeah um because they do it both i've got to figure out how they do this but uh they do it both on youtube and on on twitter live and that's very cool they use um the dying duck slaughtered hen stream yard <laughs> sorry dying no, stream yard. <laughs> no, there's, a, there's like, I think that's <laughs> like, <laughs> what's it really called did we just get into <laughs> your your memory palace is that a room in your memory palace? <laughs> this is where I put it. It's flattened squirrel. It's, it's rancid squid. It's um what? It's a rock. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it's street stream yard is the actual name. So I don't know why I well I think isn't there a duck logo and then I, I don't know. I thought it was bloody and never mind. <laughs> of course you did. Uh, it is a duck. It's a duck. Oh, um, before we forget, and please interrupt me if you've read any of these or want to input. Um, I did think this would be a good section for my non-organized, my disorganized one. I'm sorry. It's Sunday. This does. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, my brain is soup at this point. Um, anyway, uh, our directory. So out of the founding memory, how did, oh my God, out of the founding members, upcoming releases are uh, Tomorrow, Drew, AC <laughs> Merkel, London Calling, woo! London Lolling. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Mario, sexy men, a new wow. man with abs. <laughs> uh, you said Whoa. December 1st or 15th? Right? Yes. Yeah. December 1st or 15th. Uh, Ash, uh, night, the gravity of shooting stars. Fall. Woo! 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 Uh, me, Echoes of Blood. Let's go on to the directory. Um, so these are some recent releases or um, upcoming releases. And if I forgot anyone, please just tag me and I'm happy to retweet anything. But I kind of looked through um, and these are the ones that I, I knew of. Um, Chris Agate, Deep the Embers of Life. It is awesome for horror and um, fans of Walking Dead. Yes. That released on August 14th, 2020. I read it, I loved it. Daisy is a new crush, definitely. Uh, Victoria J. Price, The Eternal Dusk, that's Daughter of the Phoenix, book two, okay. August 22nd, uh, 2020. So that's a YA fantasy. If you like, um, like Lee Bardugo, uh, Lainey Taylor, kind of that whole vibe, very good. Um, I read her first one. My, I'm so sorry, my TBR is so constipated at this point. So I just, I, no, <laughs> I'm sorry for everyone I haven't gotten to. Um, like the flattened squirrel, there we go. It's just, it's a flattened squirrel. Yeah, it's a constipated flattened squirrel. Um, <laughs> this has gotten so weird. <laughs> this yeah. started so weird. Um, Anna, uh, Mosey Cap. Dark City, that is the second book in uh, Tales of the Shadow City. Um, that released on September 17th, 2020. Awesome cyberpunk, uh, cyberpunk science fiction uh, dystopia. Rory uh, Michelson, Lesser Known Monsters, uh, October 31st. So this is at the end of this week. I think that's Saturday. This Saturday is a queer dark fantasy. I loved it. It is, um, it is just wonderful. Dean did that cover too. And oh my God, amazing book, amazing cover. Um, engaged. Holly, oh, sorry, go ahead. He's in, he just got engaged. Yes. Yeah. What? Exciting. How did I miss this? I don't know. Oh, God, just to stab me. <laughs> I have to go congratulate him. Congratulations, Rory, on everything. God, that's awesome. Um, Lolly A. Love, uh, we had August 1st, The Decoding of Joe, Hall of Ignorance, an amazing book. That's like a YA uh, metaphysical one. Very, very interesting. Um, November, early November, I think November 9th. I am so sorry if I'm wrong. There is a nonfiction metaphysical book that I got to read early, which is awesome. Uh, the yeah. Joy of IT, Infinite really Transcendence. Really inspirational, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mario, please, yeah, stop me uh, if you want to interject. Like, just stop, because I will just keep. <laughs> no, it was good. I just enjoyed that very much. I got an advanced copy of, of that one, too. It was great, great. That is, yeah, no, it was so wonderful. Very, um, very much uh, the mindfulness vibe and kind of, you know, living in the present and uh, self-love, healing, validation. It was really, really good. Um, Anya Pavel, The Garden of Stone Houses. Um, last I heard, this is in December, 2020. Um, it's like mid 1800s New Orleans, very tarot uh, and rice vibe. That one is super, super awesome. Uh, Anya's amazing. Super awesome. It's the, oh yeah, you um, you got an advanced mm -hmm. copy too, right, Drew? And yeah, no, I can't just basically, you know, all of these are just all on the auto buy list. Um, Chris Woolley has Kill Her coming December 2020. It's a cross of Dexter and You, um, crime-based uh, fiction, and that sounds amazing and bloody, and I'm definitely going to pre-order that as soon as it's available. <laughs> Um, amazing and bloody. Uh, Ross Young, Get Ted Dead, is coming soon. Um, very satirical, and if you like Terry Pratchett or Monty Python, it's just, I mean, we all know and love Ross, so that is also definitely the pre-order as soon as that goes up. Um, and then Steve, or SP O'Farrell, Simone Lafray and the Red Wolves of London um, is coming 2021, and that is a middle grade spy novel. So I think Ashley's that, read that read that it's it's really good like his right it's just funny anyway it's good but i i have to tell you something you've said his name before and yeah. i asked him the other day i'm like 
Who's saying it correctly? Because I would pronounce it O'Farrell. And you said, and he said that <laughs> you asked him before and he messed up and then he felt like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it is O'Farrell because he told me O'Farrell. So that's, <laughs> I thought Steve O'Farrell. <laughs> that means he messed up his own name. <laughs> What? <laughs> and so then I said, I told him that today we were meeting and I was going to tell him that you told me that he was embarrassed and that he told me that he was embarrassed to tell you that the O was silent and to see if you would believe me. <laughs> <laughs> You're trolling me. <laughs> Perry Farrell. I will say whatever people Right, so. <laughs> <laughs> it is O'Farrell. It's O'Farrell. Okay, that's what I had thought, I thought originally, yeah. but uh, he told me O'Farrell, and then I, that, okay. So I'm like, now and I have I'm to thinking, unlearn. Oh, so feral. <laughs> Maybe he was trying to get a bit a French vibe for, you know, like Simone. <laughs> <laughs> that's. <laughs> well, that would be La Farrell. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, very well done. Ooh, that is true. <laughs> Speak French to me, Jew. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. So yeah, all of those are directory uh, upcoming, new and upcoming releases. I am so sorry if I have mispronounced anyone else's name. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> if they said it was and correct, said it wrong, then that's their own fault. <laughs> that's and funny. if you have a release that we didn't talk about, and we happen to post this on YouTube, and you happen to be. I like, have one. Still around this deep into the video, tell us and we'll <laughs> we'll like spread it out for you. That's what we're here Gideon for. Gideon has one Who? um in February. And I can't remember. I think it's the sixth. Somewhere in there. And he's been sitting on it forever and it's pissing me off because I love it so much and I just want it to come out. Who could you say the name again? I didn't hear it. Wood. Wood. Oh, yeah. He's just sitting Wood. on it, and I'm, like, ready to strangle him. <laughs> As he's, he's, like, written book two, and I'm like, come on, man. It's so good. <laughs> You'll love it. Because you love death, Halo. You'll love it. <laughs> oh, are you looking at my title side? <laughs> I do love death. <laughs> Oh, I just thought of such inappropriate things to say, but I'm moving on. <laughs> say them, please. This no. literally started with us talking about gooches, so. He's sitting on wood. I don't know. I just <laughs> got to release it. <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> oh, can we talk about? This is We're 12 years <laughs> old. <laughs> we are. Totally. I've been watching Toy Story uh, 2. What? And why? I, don't judge. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you. Yeah, it's, I, I've had to. It's, it's a form of torture. Um, yeah. But it's a great movie. Please don't hate me. Um, why would they name a character Woody? Because I just. I know. I cannot, for the life of me, keep a straight face the entire movie. <laughs> it's just not right. It's like, oh, Woody's broken. Oh, <laughs> Woody's ripped. I'm just like, oh, God, this sounds like one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good study in, in choosing names for ca your characters. <laughs> I mean, it's that great. reminds me I just of like. Can't get past it. I, I saw, like, back before we started all of this, I saw someone on Twitter talking about why it's important to have beta readers. And they had a children's book uh, that's talking about something hitting something and exploding like a tossed salad. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this is why it's important to have beta readers because I had no clue. <laughs> So whoever wrote Toy Story had just had no clue. It has to be. But I mean, it was, it's Pixar. Like, come on. You don't put, like, did I tell you about that website I did? No, oh, that's on purpose. Like, yeah, I think it was a joke because, yeah. Like, there was a website I did. And I think people are kind of oblivious in corporate. 
because <laughs> there was a line of text that was penetrating this poor woman um, in the <laughs> in a hero <laughs> at the top of the website and no one else saw it. And they were just like, this is great. We're going to publish it. And it wasn't like one of those things where like, Kayla, you have a dirty mind. It was just like, I'm like, she is literally like, this is like explicit. We cannot have like the sale. Anyway, um, <laughs> I had to bring it up in private to our director <laughs> just to be like, um, the placement of this, uh, this line of Texas conference. Anyway. <laughs> was she grateful? <laughs> uh, she, she was very professional about it. She was just like, I understand your concerns, and yes, I do think we should flip the image. <laughs> I was like, thank you, because I'm going to get the feedback. <laughs> oh, oh. Is there anything else anyone wants to talk about, promote? <laughs> this video is going to be like three hours at this point. I I, I just, uh, uh, I don't know when it's coming out exactly, but um, a concert that was supposed to be based on my book coming about um, was supposed to be live in, in April last year, and it is actually coming out sometime early November, mid-November by the Empire City Men's Chorus. Um, and it's, it's all going to be virtual. It's actually going to be like there's, they went to oh, the cool. studio and recorded music, and I read readings, and uh, they did uh, interview questions with me and my hubby, and so it's actually going to happen sometime in November. So coming That's about awesome. concert. So is that um is that going to be like a live event? Is it going to be recorded? Like how can we stalk you? Um, as soon as they, they put it together, it's going to be like, I, I think it's going to be like a premiere where you buy tickets to it, like to a, as if you were going to a concert. And then I don't know what they're doing with it afterwards. I assume that they'll have it recorded. Yeah. That's awesome, Mario. Uh, oh, yeah, because I was going to come to uh, New York. It was going to be, and then yeah. the world just got the plague. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. exactly. So I, oh, I my think God. Still being sponsored by the community, the LGBTQ plus uh, community center in New York City. So um, kind of, uh, it's, uh, they're calling it a concert experience. So I'm excited. Well, I like wow. experiences, so. <laughs> yes. Well, you do. <laughs> um, that is amazing. I will definitely, so you said November, like yeah. next month. Is it November next month? Yeah, and actually in a few days. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, oh, I want to give a quick shout out to um, uh, to Connor Braden. If I mispronounce your name, I'm so sorry. Uh, Storytell Pod, uh, the storyteller, uh, uh, <laughs> story of a storyteller. It's uh, Twitter at Storytell Pod, um, doing amazing interviews and at writing underscore show, also doing amazing writing. Uh, interviews oh and drew you were just interviewed and i'm sorry my brain is just completely it farting is, uh jl rothstein yes you're talking about that one the youtube one right yes that oh, was geez. awesome too so it these was. are all like they're doing an amazing job lifting up indie authors doing amazing interviews i just really want to give a shout out because i think that has been so good at you know putting these um kind of permanent uh videos out into the the cybersphere for all of us. So, you know, huge shout out, huge thank yous and all of that. Anyone else want, I mean, we can just kind of party until the end. <laughs> it's not cutting me up yet. So anything else you want to share? Um, any qualms, any insights, any wisdom? Oh well, no, I'm none of that. Because I might have a friend of mine from Twitter narrating stay. Awesome. Oh, wow. That's right. great. I know. I kind of want to say, but I don't I don't want to put it out there who it is. Um but I'm super excited. Like I just messaged him because I've I've heard his voice on um when Huli started those like when we were reading a chapter or yes. two of our books. That time stories. Yeah, and uh, I heard his voice, and I'm like, you know what? He would be perfect. So I asked him, and he was like, why did you ask me this? <laughs> and I was like, 
because of that video. And so he actually is like super excited and he's reading Stay right now and he's liking it. And so he just sent me this morning right before we got on this um, recording. He sent me like a three minute thing and I haven't even been able to listen to it yet. So that's exciting. I, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I'm way rather give my money to somebody that's like a friend of mine on Twitter than right. random, you know. That is so so <laughs> very exciting. Yeah. Woo -woo -woo. That's amazing. So do you just like for audiobooks, do you just kind of give them the book and then because I've had um I've had a few people um approach me about audiobooks and I kinda wanna ask them like have you actually uh, have you read the whole thing? Because right. there are hundreds what? of instances of swears. <laughs> Not all of them appropriate. You know, I was a little worried about some of that too because I went further in London calling with the, there's more cussing and there's actual sex on the page and and I wasn't sure how Jamie was going to react when she hit those I also knew she was a professional so I just I but I didn't know because I kept the first one so clean um but she takes pdf that's what she likes to get is a pdf because she can she can take it and read it as it is and she can add her notes in um but she also doesn't read it in advance she kind of reads it right before she does it so it's kind of like, so she's, she's getting to experience the book like chapter by chapter. She's reading it and going, oh, okay, this is what's going on here. And then she does, she, she does the recording. So that might be part of like the process is not having read it first. Um, that makes for a good audio book. I don't know. It's like your first impression. I think I've heard like actors say that it's like <clears throat> sometimes the first, um, like when you read it at the, the table reading is the best because you're bringing that like surprise to it I guess mm -hmm. I think with mine is probably the opposite <laughs> because you kind of have to get to know the characters and who they are in mind oh like how to portray Joe as like way more fragile in the beginning and then like he loses that um stutter and stuff and he as he gets more I don't know I don't know that's what I think anyway about mine yeah but that's very exciting though i bet you're you're anxious to go and listen to it <laughs> right I, oh, I am but also it's scary too because <laughs> if it doesn't sound like what i have in my head it's like crap you know right right but it is good it's good yeah I really i really need to look into this audio thing audio book well, thing I put that poll up last week. I don't know if you guys saw it, but mm -hmm. I had um so many people are like, why are you so big on putting out an audiobook? Like it just seems like so much work and it's so expensive and like who listens to audio? So oh. I, I put it out there and I asked and I had like 300 and something results, I think, and over 50% of people both listen to audiobooks and read ebooks yeah you know what so many people who commute to work listen to like that's what people keep asking me like my my friends my community they're like well i listen i don't have time to read but when i'm in the car i i want to listen to books so they read books all the time through uh, you know the audio yeah so i i think it's a good thing to do it's a growing do segment is what I'm picking up from everything I'm looking at. It's not growing for me yet, but it's going to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially like Jamie does just such a, she's like, yeah. yeah, amazing. Well, your story is amazing paired with her amazing voice. It's just like, yeah, yeah very I, think captivating. It's, I think it's a good team up. I yeah. don't think I could have been any luckier. I can't believe she was your, she was your first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I didn't have, I mean, I listened to the second one that came in, but I like closed auditions right after that because like, there's no point. I don't, you know, this, this is it. You know. Yeah. I don't forget you first. No. It's really interesting. I, 
first time I listened to audiobooks, I hated them because I'm like, this is so slow. And like, I could read a book three times as fast. But um, now I, I found that if, if it's a good narrator, I actually like the book more. And I don't know if you guys know this, but I review um, for a gay romance blog and I review both ebooks and audio and I had to like I there was an ebook that just a couple weeks ago that I couldn't read it was just awful and I didn't realize it was the same book when I signed up for the audio but I gave the audio version of five stars huh. I couldn't even read the book um, why I don't know. It's just interesting how, like, it's just a totally different experience sometimes. Right. Yeah. Audio can bring out inflections too yeah. that you might not, you know, necessarily. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys, we have a house showing, so I need to pop off. <laughs> Thank you all for staying so long. <laughs> this was like two hours. <laughs> that was awesome, though. We needed time with each other. We just yeah, we don't get it anymore. We... I like the idea of this this con. Yeah, I, I like we... this. We we need to we 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 need to kind of like let the creative oh. juices flow, if you will. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> yeah. We'll do this again soon. <laughs> I like this, uh, this, I don't know, disorganized uh, format too. Oh, we're, we're just also, yeah, we're, we're also pretty natural with each other. <laughs> Things just automatically come up. Um. Explode. <laughs> yeah, they do, like salad. Mark, did you see my comment last night? I, I haven't even looked at Twitter much today, but that <laughs> Drew asked me about the banana pudding versus creme brulee. I didn't see that. And I was like, nice. did Mario make this up? <laughs> <laughs> Who tagged me? I think it was J.L. Rothstein that tagged me in that. And I was just like, um, <laughs> either? Both? I've, I've never had banana pudding, but wait, like, what are we talking about? You said you, you said you were born like in Georgia. How did you live in Georgia and not have banana pudding? I went to high school in Georgia. Oh, okay. But I didn't pudding there. <laughs> yes. Oh, Halloween party <laughs> next Friday. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of. <laughs> How important are these costumes? Banana ba uh, hammocks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not doing a banana hammock. No. Do it, Mario. You gotta, do you it. Gotta, you gotta show up with your abs exposed. Do it. To match your book. You, you wear your shirt open. You know, if I you look get some like little bouquet things to float in front of you like it's on fire. Oh if I looked God. like that book cover, I probably wouldn't be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be on a book cover. <laughs> that cover is so flippin'. Yes. Yeah. So. I, I give it three thumbs up. <laughs> uh, I uh, I appreciate that, and it's now. Is it on all of your book covers? My husband, yes, he's on the cover of all of my books. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> shouldn't he be the one dressed in a? What are we calling a banana hammock? Yeah, put Jim in a banana hammock. A banana hammock. Hmm. I, I do have some pictures of him from the past. <laughs> See? But I don't want to wear a green dress. I don't want to wear a green dress. Or really? <laughs> this is a race. Whatever I get, I should have a leopard print. That's what I should have. Leopard print. You could pull off leopard print. You know, my, my dear Italian mother showed <laughs> me a beautiful <laughs> leopard print 
bathrobe when I was a little boy, and I, I still want leopard print. <laughs> Do it, just as a leopard. Good boy, Mario. Uh, yes, there you go. <laughs> um, okay, Halloween party, October 30th. Uh, it will be 4 p.m. Eastern time, 8 p.m. UK time. Sorry for the other time zones. 3 p.m. my time. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. One time. Um, I think this is going to cut us off. You all are awesome. Wear your bana <laughs> banana hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> three thumbs up. <laughs> three, three. three thumbs up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.